Hello, today we're going to talk about graphs of the quadratic function b. Alright, the first thing we're going to talk about is zeros of the quadratic function. So what the zeros are basically, or they are, just the x-intercepts. Alright, they're also called the roots. So this one has two real zeros because it crosses the x-axis two places. One real zero is when only the vertex touches the x. That's when you only have one answer, because it only hits at one spot, the vertex. And if it doesn't hit at all, you have two imaginary zeros or zero real ones. All right. So the other thing you need to know, when this is our standard form. So when a is positive, you can have a smiley face. When A is negative, you're going to have a frowny face. All right, to go along with the frown face and the happy face, you have to understand the Y coordinates. So if I have a frowny face and I have a Y coordinate that's positive, so like this one, these are my positive coordinates up here. So if I have a frown face, but my Y is positive, that means... I'm going to have two real zeros. Because it's going to have to be up here, so when the parabola opens up, it's going to have to hit at two spots. So if I have a frowny face, my y coordinate is negative, so anyone down here, all right, it'll never get above the y axis, or the x axis, it'll never get above zero. So that one, you're going to have two imaginary zeros. I probably spelled imaginary wrong. I'm a horrible speller. All right. So let's come over here. When A is positive, which is your leading coefficient, and you have a smiley face. So right here, I have a smiley face. My Y coordinate is positive. I'm going to have, I'm just going to draw a line, two imaginary zeros. Because if I have a smiley face, my y coordinate has to be negative in order for it to go through uh, the x axis. And that's what this is going to be. This is going to be two real zeros. So that's just more of a thought thing to think of. And if your y coordinate is zero, so if your y coordinate is zero, then you have one real zero. So frowny face, y coordinate positive, two real zeros. Or if your a is negative, y coordinate negative, two imaginary zeros. Uh, your leading coefficient is positive, you get a smiley face. If the y coordinate is positive, you have two imaginary zeros. If your a is positive, smiley face, and your y coordinate is negative, two real zeros. All right, that's something you need to write down and just be able to remember. If you can't remember, just think about it and it makes sense if you think about it enough. All right, here is three of the ones we just did to uh, see how many zeros it has. That's basically what we're finding. So how many zeros? Uh, probably didn't spell that right. I can never remember if it's an ES. So if I have a positive coefficient, so that means my a is positive, all right? So that means I have a smiley face. And my vertex y is positive. So if I have five, one, so that vertex number is positive. So it's right there. How many zeros do I have? I have two imaginary zeros. Four, zero real. Negative coefficient, so it means I have negative A up front, which gives me a frowny face. The vertex, the Y is positive, so we'll just stick with five, one. 
here, and it's a frowning face. So how many times does it go through the x-axis? Two. I have two real zeros here. And then my last one over here is I have a positive coefficient, which gives me an A plus smiley face, and a vertex is negative. So let's go with phi vertex y is negative, so negative one. Graph it up. One, two, three, four, five. Five, negative one. And I have a smiley face. So it goes through the x-axis twice. So I have two real zeros. And that's how you find it. If you need to draw it out, go on ahead. It's not that hard. All right, now we're gonna talk about basic transformations of a quadratic when it's in vertex form. So this right here is your left or right. Because it's your x value, you add, you move to the right, you subtract, you go to the left. This number back here is your up and down because it's your y coordinate. The best way I find to do is just to show it. All right, so basically in your mind, now the A means something else, means we're not worrying about it. So think of this as starting at X squared. So when you graph X squared, it starts, the vertex is at zero, zero. Now, what is our vertex here? Well, negative two, negative one. So if I was at zero, and now I'm at negative two, how many did I move? Well, I moved to the left, two. If I was at zero and I moved to negative one on the y, I moved down one. So those are your transformations right there. It's that simple. Think of it as zero, zero, and then find your vertex. Just count how many or which directions you went. So here we go. I have, so I start at zero, zero again. My vertex here is three, four. Make sure you switch the sign of what's inside there or you're gonna mess the whole thing up. So I was at zero, zero. Now I'm at zero, three. So how many did I move? Move to the right three because positive, negative. Now four, I moved up four. And there you go. Now let's do this one over here. This one's a little bit different. It starts at x squared, and it wants it, me to tell what the new vertex form is based on what we got here. So three left. So if I start at zero, zero, and I go three left, that means negative three. But how do I put it in there if it's already negative? Well, it becomes positive. Then I go five up, so I have to add five. And that's your vertex form of it. So just start at zero, zero, and figure it out if you're just doing left, right, up, and down. All right, this has been Graphs of Quadratic Functions B. Hope it helped.